G'day Throttlers, welcome back to the channel. Now, I've been back to visit my mate Div at Motorcycle Stuff in St. Peter's, and he's given me these two beautiful roof helmets to bring to you guys, to show you and to share with you the information about these two helmets. Now, before we roll the intro, uh, we're looking at today the Boxer V8, which is the older version, and we've got the Roof Desmo here, which is a newer updated version. Very similar, but different at the same time. Anyway, so let's roll that intro, and then we'll dig into the differences between the V8, Boxer, and the Desmo. <music> Now, if you've landed on this video, I assume it's because you're already interested in the roof style of helmets. Now, I say that because it's quite a polarizing style of helmet visually. I guess you could say it's a bit like a fighter jet pilot style of helmet. And uh, it is something that people either love or they hate. So I'm going to keep the looks out of it because you either like this already or you hate it already. So let's move in to the specs of each particular one. Now this is the Boxer V8. This is the older version and the Desmo is an upgraded version, slightly different. As we go through the comparisons, you'll see that there has been some substantial but subtle changes into the Desmo. Uh, and there are some good things and some bad things as well. So all right, so essentially both these roof helmets are a modular helmet. And it's designed for those of you that like to have an open-faced helmet on occasions, but also a safety conscious chin barred helmet as well for other occasions. Now, the Boxer V8 is the same as a Desmo, the chin bar rises up. But for most modular helmets, this is where it ends for you. What this creates is a massive amount of wind resistance and wind buffeting as you're riding with your head in the wind and the chin bar up in the air, so you can have your open-faced helmet happening here. The roof helmet's uniqueness is the fact that it goes all the way to the back, as you can see, and that way creating no wind resistance at all, no wind buffeting at all, and you get your open face helmet feelings with no wind buffeting and your chin bars sitting strategically right behind your helmet, behind the shell. Same goes with the Desmo, lifting the chin bar up, comes all the way up over the head, tucks down behind the shell of the helmet, you get your open face attitude there, no wind resistance at all. The, probably the best feature of both helmets in my opinion is this. With my Harley Davidson Street Glide Special, I get wind buffeting just on the top of my helmet. If I had these chin bars up even a little bit higher, it would drive me absolutely mental, but there was no wind resistance at all with these helmets with the chin bars set all the way back. Okay, let's look in more detail at the chin bar. Firstly, on the box of V8, as you bring the chin bar down, there's tabs here where you push in and it clicks and locks on. So now the chin bar is not moving at all, not for love or money. Uh, and the simple way to get it off is just by depressing this red tab and lifting the whole tab out. And you have to do it on both sides at the same time. And then the chin bar raises again with ease. Now looking at the Desmo now, being the modern updated version, you can see that there is a red tab on the chin bar. Now for this one, if you depress the red tab and the red tab here together, the chin bar comes up. So in this circumstance, you only need one hand to raise your chin bar. So if you wanted to raise the chin bar on the boxer, you either have to physically stop on the side of the road and use both hands to do it, or do one and then the other, and then bring it up. But with the Desmo, you can be at full flight, squeeze the chin bar, lift, raise, and you're done one-handed. No need to pull over, no need to slow down. So both these helmets have a retractable protective visor as well. You can get smoked visors, you can get uh, iridium visors as well. There's a whole lot of accessories you can get for these helmets, but this one on the boxer is completely manual. So the one on the Desmo has a smart feature. So when you bring the chin bar up, 
you'll see that the visor has released already and comes up into a safe position so the chin bar can come across and not do any damage to the visor. All right, so with the visor down on the Desmo, as you bring the chin bar back, if you watch the visor here, the visor raises automatically to get itself out of the way and keep it safe. And then as you lock it down, click it into place, then you can bring the visor back down and it creates a solid seal around the chin bar as well. So even in the dead of winter, these helmets look like they wouldn't be very windproof, but they are really quite wind resistant. Now coming down to helmet weight. Now this is where modular helmets often fail in my opinion. I understand they need to be a bit heavier because of all the extra mechanisms in them. Um, but being a guy that rides hundreds of kilometers a day uh, when I'm on my bike, the lighter the helmet for me, the better. So here's one of the negatives about these helmets for me, they're heavy. So the Boxer is built out of fiberglass and it is 1,650 grams. So that's about 400 grams heavier than my other helmets. Now this isn't a deal breaker for a lot of people, uh, but it's just something to be aware of uh, without a doubt. So the Desmo is a thermoplastic composite. Now, with the extra components on it and the extra technology, it is slightly heavier than the Boxer, and this comes in at 1,720 grams. Not necessarily noticeable when it's on your head, but something for you to be aware of when purchasing helmets, definitely. Okay, safety chin straps in both these helmets are, are quite different as well. So the Boxer comes with a seatbelt style strap clasp, where you just click it in like a seatbelt and unclick it as well. Whereas the Desmo comes with a micrometric ratchet strap. Now that's just a fancy word to say that you can slide this ratchet strap in as far as it needs to go. So you just tighten it by pushing it in further. And then to release, it's just a quick release to take the ratchet out. Now this is good in many ways for emergency services. They'd be able to release this very, very easily. So up until this helmet, I'd never used this system before, but it has taken me a while to get used to, but the more that I've used it, the more it makes sense to me. All of my helmets have the double D rings where you fold it in, pull it back through. That's just what I've worn for 25, 30 years, and I'm used to it. Uh, I am now really liking this, and uh, I'll probably look at getting it on the next helmet that I buy as well. So ventilation in Australia for riding is super important to me. I overheat really easy. So I want to make sure that every helmet that I've got uh, has incoming air and exiting air. Now that's where some of my helmets are a weakness at the moment and the next ones that I purchase, I will certainly want to have an improvement on that. So looking at the chin bar on the Boxer, you've got really aggressive looking shark gill vents here to let airflow come through. You've also got these little uh, chin bar vents that just raise up manually on the front of the chin bar. To close them, you just close them down real easy as well. Coming to the top of the helmet, there is a switch here that opens up a small air vent here for air intake, and it also opens up a small exit point here. So it just allows that wind flow to come over the top of your head and exit behind your head. So. Very, very good ventilation. It is noticeable when you're riding and you open it. Um, big thumbs up for that. So coming onto the Desmo, the newer model, you can see that the ventilation is completely different. On the chin bar, there's two switches where you can open and close air ventilation to come into your mouth zone. There are no shark gills on this one. Coming up to the top of the helmet and you have two inputs for ventilation here that open and close by this switch here. And also there are two exit points on the back to let that hot air escape out the back of your helmet as you're riding as well, that you can open and close. Now, because this is a versus video, there needs to be a winner, right? I must say that I am sitting on the fence a little bit about which one of these are better because they have their own strengths and their own weaknesses and they're pretty much the old guard and the new guard. In saying that, I think I would be leaning towards 
the newer version with better ventilation, a more comprehensive chin bar and visor mechanism, um, better air ventilation. It is heavier, it is marginally heavier, but I think the Desmo would be the winner for this versus video. As always, when we do work with motorcycle stuff, there is a discount code for you to get a cheaper, better deal on any products that I have on the channel. In particular, these two helmets are already heavily discounted on the motorcyclestuff.com.au website, so check it out. But if you use the code THROTTLEROOF, you're gonna get a bit more off it as well. So make sure you head over to motorcyclestuff.com.au if this interests you, have a look at the pricing. Feel free to contact the shop. Div is a very helpful fella. And uh, tell him that I sent you and uh, he'll make sure that he looks after you and gives you all the information that you need as well. Anyway, guys, that's it from me today. V8 Boxer, Desmo, roof helmets. Check them out. So thanks again to MotorcycleStuff.com.au that's supplied me with these helmets to bring to you guys. Uh, awesome to support the smaller businesses in the country. Check them out, get on the website. Throttle Roof is your discount code. And until the next video, folks, throttle on, stay safe. See you later. I got time, it's clear to see. From up here, the world seems small.